Right, let's go on to question two. So they say we've got block M, which is 10 kilograms that is connected to block, uh, well, block big M, uh, which is 10 kilograms is connected to block M, small M, two kilograms with a rope T of negligible mass over a frictionless pulley. Both blocks are at rest. Okay, so that's very important because it tells us that our system is at equilibrium. So they tell us that the, uh, the slope makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal uh, friction on the slope cannot be ignored. So meaning that there is definitely friction uh, on the slope here. Right, so they say to us we must define a uh, normal force. Now remember that uh, normal force, ladies and gents, is, uh, uh, is a force or a component of a force right, of an object with a surface right, that it is in contact with that is perpendicular to the surface, okay? So please uh, remember that definition. Now note um, the next question, they say, draw a labeled free body diagram, right, of all forces acting on the two kilogram mass. Now notice for the two kilogram mass, we know that we, we are going to have the force of uh, or rather the tension okay so we're going to have the tension of the string right so tension on string right as well as the gravitational force now notice uh, try as much as possible uh, ladies and gents to you know make it visible which force is bigger than the other now, because our system is at equilibrium, it means that our tension there should be equal to the normal force. Uh, so this would be, uh, in fact, let's just make it easier for ourselves. Let's say this is the weight, okay, uh, of um, mass M. So that's the two, that's the uh, free body diagram. And note, as I did say to you in previous times, that the amount of forces that you have will be indicated by the mark allocation, right? So that is how we are going to answer that question. They say calculate the friction, now in 2.3, uh, the frictional force needed to keep the blocks at rest. Okay, now, which means now we are looking at the 10 kilogram block. So it is being pulled by um, the force, the tension there on the string. And we note because we're dealing with the frictionless pulley, we know that the tension on the one side of the pulley should be equal to the tension on the other side of the pulley, right? So we can determine that tension, right? What is that tension? We can use the two kilogram mass and say, well, the tension, so this is for two kilograms, okay? So we know that F net will be equal to zero because the acceleration is zero in that case. So which means tension minus the weight should equal to zero. So tension should be equal to that weight, which is two times 9.8, and that's 19.6 Newtons, right? But now that's not what we are interested in. We want to find out, okay, what is or what are the forces, uh, or rather uh, the frictional force that acts on uh, big M, right? So we said we've got the tension on uh, the string, right? But what other forces do we have? We've got a gravitational uh, force, in this case, the, uh, the parallel component of that gravitational force. So that's FG parallel, that's pulling the, f uh, the mass downwards but we also have the frictional force that's exerted on that guy. So that's friction there, okay? So I know that I'm going to have, this is now for the 10 kg mass, okay? I'm going to have the tension, okay? We know the sum of the forces that are parallel, okay, will be equal to zero as well. So that means I'm going to have tension, right? I'm taking a force upwards as positive or up the slope as positive. 
uh, plus a negative friction plus minus the ff the pepin uh, the parallel component of gravity and we know this would be equal to zero okay right i'm gonna try and complete this on the other side so this means that now ladies and gents it means that tension would therefore uh, because we're looking for gravity right so we know that our tension is 19.6 all right that's minus fg parallel now note ladies and gents fg parallel we know this is mass times gravity multiplied by the sine of the angle of elevation right so this is going to be uh, 10 times 9.8 times the sine of 30 degrees right so if you don't know where that comes from please go and watch my videos on uh, newton's laws right and we know this is now going to be equal to our uh, F, uh, our frictional force, right? If we took tension to the other, I mean, uh, friction to the other side where we had a zero. So we know the value of friction. Okay, apologies. Let me just write this nicely. Okay, so we've, we've got, uh, we said tension, which was 19.6 minus fg parallel we said that's 10 times 9.8 the sine of 30 that's equal to the frictional force right when we take friction to the other side so let's calculate that ladies and gents so we've got 19.6 minus uh, 10 times 9.8 the sine of 30 degrees right and i get a frictional force value um of uh, 29.4 uh, actually this is uh, this is telling me that this guy is actually uh, experiencing friction that's going up the slope uh, that's ironically and it does make sense because if you think about it this mass is significantly bigger uh, than the mass of, uh, uh, you know, the, the mass of uh, the, the 2 kg mass. So the friction there, we got a value of 29.4. So this is going to be 29.4 newtons. Okay, right. So that tells me that uh, actually when I was calculating there, that friction actually should have been in the positive direction, right, since I chose up. Uh, the incline as positive however we're looking for the magnitude of the frictional force right um, so that must be 29.4 uh, uh, up the slope right uh, okay right now let's go to the next question now they say to us the the rope snaps okay uh, above the mass m causing the block m big m to slide down uh, the slope Right, and block M to fall to the ground. The kinetic frictional force between the blocks and the slope is 25 newtons, right? So now they are telling us that we've got a frictional force value between the block and the slope, okay? That's 25 newtons, and they said to us we must ignore the mass of the rope. Now, they say draw a free body diagram of all forces acting on big M. Now, note in this case, big M should slide down. So that means, remember, we no longer have the tension. Okay, so we're going to have the parallel component of gravity. So FG parallel, but we're also going to have the frictional force that's acting on big m all right uh, in this case please note we also have the normal force all right so that's the normal force as well as the perpendicular component of so that's fg perpendicular if you didn't want to show those components you can actually draw just the gravitational force there all right so these are the forces so force of gravity 
right acting on this guy here the frictional force and please label in full ladies and gents so frictional force okay uh, please don't just write down the variables when you write down the keys make sure that you label in full so you can say the weight or you can say force of gravity okay i don't have enough space to write all of that there uh, but i'm sure you uh, understand so this is normal force all right so let's go to the next question they say to us calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of mass m so remember we said horizontal or rather parallel to the incline we've got the force right the parallel component of gravity as well as the frictional force those are the two forces remember that tension is no longer uh, actively playing a role there because um, the two masses are no longer connected to each other right so what we're going to say is f net is equal to ma right so that means that uh, fg parallel right that parallel component of gravity minus the frictional force is equal to ma so that's going to be 10 times 9.8 the sine of 30 minus 25 newtons right remember that's the friction that we're given is equal to 10a right so let's calculate that so that's going to be 10 times 9.8 the sine of 30 right that's minus 25 okay that gives us 24 so 24 is equal to 10a we divide both sides by 10 and what we get there is an acceleration of 2.4 meters per second squared going down the slope isn't it Okay, so uh, that would be the magnitude of our acceleration. Now they say to us, block M, small m, takes 0 0.5 seconds to reach the ground, right? And they want us to calculate the velocity, um, the final velocity of block M, right? So, so first of all, uh, we've got the time, right? The initial velocity must have been zero okay and we know the acceleration remember it is accelerating due to gravity so what we're going to do there is uh, we're going to say well vf that's vi plus a delta t right we want the final velocity we've got the initial which is zero okay our acceleration going to assume that downwards is positive so that will be 9.8 and the time that it took is 0 0.5. So in this case, that would be 9.8 times 0 0.5. That would be 4.9 meters per second. And that is down. Okay. So that is the final velocity of small m. Right. And then finally, they say to us, how would the final velocity of m be affected if the mass was doubled, okay, and it is dropped from the same height, okay, they say, right, only increase, decrease, or remain the same. Ladies and gents, please note it would remain exactly the same, right? So that's what we are going to say as our answer. But why is that? Right, now, if you note the calculation on final velocity, right it was not dependent on mass right so we can say that equations of motion okay or the laws of kinematics equations of motion are not dependent on mass okay dependent on the mass of the object um, on the mass of the object Okay. Alternatively, ladies and gents, you can mention that uh, the object was moving uh, vertically downwards and accelerating due to gravitational uh, acceleration, right? So in that case, it means that 
their velocity should be the same since it would not depend on the mass. Okay, right. So you can mention the fact that it was in free fall, right? And uh, gravitational acceleration is not a function of the mass of the object. Ladies and gents, that's how we come to the end of question two, right? Let's continue on to the next question.